Good Shabbos, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you and your families a happy and healthy Shabbos. I'm here at Chabad Abu Bay, and you're at home, and I'm sure you're preparing for Shabbos. May this Shabbos be a meaningful one, a healthy one, a one that is a Shabbos which is full of blessing and only good things. Amen. I gotta share with you something personal. I am having difficulties davening, praying. In our prayers, and I'm sure literally billions of people around the world are praying at this time. When I daven and I come to the part where we ask God for health, and of course Hashem's a merciful Father, Hashem should provide health and healing for everyone who needs it at this time. But I'm struggling because when something of this magnitude happens, there's no doubt that Hashem is trying to send a message to the entire world. And without picking up that message, without understanding that message, then asking for healing, yes, Hashem should grant healing, but asking for healing is not enough. We have to turn to Hashem and say, Hashem, I understand, or I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to pick up the lessons which you are trying to send to all of humanity. And yes, please send healing to the entire world. So the question is, what is the message or what can be the message that Hashem is trying to send the entire world? And I'd like to share with you just a thought which is based on the fact that we're just so close to the festival of Pesach. We know in the story of Pesach that the Egyptians were smitten with 10 plagues. And we all know it from the Pesach Seder. There's dam, tzvadea, kinim, blood, frogs, lice, etc. And if you think about what's happening in the world now, almost all of the plagues are playing itself out in one way or another. And I'll give you a few examples. Go on to the uh, news websites and they'll tell you that it's a financial bloodbath, what's happening in the stock market. And the term that they're using is bloodbath. Blood. Tzvardea, we know that uh, the frogs came into one's home. Those closest to you could give it to you. We know that there were lice. It says the lice were tiny, they were invisible. You couldn't detect them. Just like the coronavirus, which is invisible. We know that uh, there was the plague of darkness. Again, it's dark, you can't see, you can't detect it. There was the death of the firstborn, need no, need no explanation. We know by the plague of Bara, the hail, Hashem says, Moshe tells Pharaoh that everyone should go indoors. So what we're experiencing so close to Pesach is almost like the 10 plagues that Mitzrayim, that the Egyptians experienced. But the question is, in this story, who is the enemy? Who are the Egyptians in this story? And it's frightening to think that all of humanity may be like the Egyptians in the story of Pesach receiving the 10 plagues. If you look at the story of Pesach, the plagues happen right before redemption, which means that in order for redemption to happen, the plagues have to precede. You see, Egypt and redemption contradict each other. Mitzrayim represents incarceration. Mitzrayim, Egypt represents being trapped. Redemption and freedom is the opposite of that. In order for redemption to happen, in order for freedom to happen, one has to rid oneself, rid the world of Mitzrayim, of those things that hold back redemption. You see, if I had to describe redemption in today's world, it wouldn't just be that there shouldn't be the coronavirus. Imagine a world with redemption, with real freedom. It would be a world without war, a world without greed, 
without selfishism, not being so materialistic, basically not being in Mitzrayim, not being incarcerated. You see, the world just a few weeks ago, which we think of, oh, as a perfect world, was not a perfect, perfect world. It was a world that was suffering, that is suffering from many things. A world that it was trapped in its own Mitzrayim, in its own little prison cell. And before redemption, before we can bring on, before the world can be ready for, a, for redemption, for freedom, for real freedom, one has to rid oneself of Mitzrayim. And perhaps what the plagues represent, the plagues represent ridding Mitzrayim of what Mitzrayim represents. You know, our prophets thousands of years ago told us that one day the world will be perfected, that the world will be truly free. And many people know this as Yemot HaMashiach, the days of Mashiach, redemption, freedom. We were promised that the world will one day be so free that the wolf will lie with the lamb, that the lion will not want to prey on any other animal, that there will be no more wars. We'll, we will beat our swords into plowshares. Our prophets told us this many, many times. So much so that in the last 70 years, every single great Jewish leader, every single Rebbe told us this. The Lubavitch Rebbe, our Rebbe, told us countless times we are holding at a time right before the redemption. Now think about it. Our current situation right now has caused us to be indoors, has caused us to be a bit less materialistic. You know, if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, now we're at the bottom. The need is an existential need, not to go outside for fear for our lives and for others. We're thinking about, we're going back to the basics, less materialistic. I just read an article that the wars in the world in the last three weeks, those those entities that are fighting against each other have stopped fighting, nearly stopped. Why? Because, because they're thinking of their existence. The world in the last few weeks also has become a kinder place. I'm finding it that when I'm out there, when I see people, when I meet people, people are a bit more sensitive to each other. Perhaps what we're experiencing is the precursor to redemption. And perhaps the Mashiach that we've been talking about for so many years and millennia, that's what the world is experiencing right now. We're at the threshold of Mashiach. So let us hope and pray that when this thing is behind us, we'll be better people for it. And we'll be elevated. And Hashem will send redemption to the world. Send true freedom to the world. May this Pesach, the festival of our redemption, the festival of freedom be a Pesach of true freedom, although many of us will be celebrating it alone without our family members, without our friends, may we experience true freedom, may the world usher in this age, the age of redemption, and may it happen speedily in our days. Amen. Wishing you all a good Shabbos.